ladies and gentlemen, before we continue, um, I want you to become familiar with the so-called normal distribution. Why? Because in later parts of the course, you might hear things like, this requires a normal distribution or your data should be normally distributed and you should know what that means. So in this lecture, I'm going to explain to you what that entails. I have here a data file. This data file is separate from the uh, data file that is used in the other videos in this section. So please be aware of that. Why is it separate? Because I recorded this video after the other ones were already recorded. So I had to use another data file. This data file is called Defects Morning and Afternoon. It is attached to this video. So if you want to keep up with what I'm doing, please uh, pause this video and download it. And otherwise, it's also fine Then you just uh, look at what I'm doing. I have data uh, about the morning shift and about the afternoon shift. And I measure how many defects they produce. Okay, so defective items. And on day one, the morning shift produces nine defects. Okay, so nine mistakes. And um, the afternoon shift on day one produces 15 defects or 15 items with a mistake. That could be chocolate bars, that could be something else doesn't matter and on day two the morning shift produced seven items that have a defect or a mistake and the afternoon shift produces 15 items that have a defect or a mistake i want to know whether uh, these two follow a normal distribution yes or no now there are two ways to find out one is the visual way with with a graph a histogram and the other way is by using a normality test let's start with the easy way, the visual way, using a graph, in this case, a histogram. Please go to graph, please go to histogram. Let's go for the simple one, click on OK. Uh, we want to have a histogram first for the facts in the morning, click on OK. OK, ladies and gentlemen, this is a histogram. It basically shows us the distribution of our data. So we had, for instance, uh, six times, six times, a frequency of six, that we had, that the, that the morning shift produced 10 defects, okay? So this occurred six times that the morning shift produced 10 defects, 10 items with a mistake in it. It occurred two times that the morning shift produced um, eight defects, okay? So it occurred two times that the morning shift produced eight defects. It occurred one time that the morning shift produced 13 defects. It occurred one time that the morning shift produced 13 defects. Why one? Because if you look at the height of this bar, it is the frequency is one. So it occurred one time. This is a histogram. It basically counts how often did a certain um, value occur. Now, when do we speak of a normal distribution? Well, I would say this is a normal distribution. A normal distribution, it follows the shape of a bell, okay? A classical bell. Um, that's why it's called also bell-shaped curve. So it follows that, uh, that, that, that shape. It has one peak. That peak is in the middle. And as I move away from the peak, observations become less and less and less frequent. Okay, so this is a bell-shaped distribution or normal distribution or Gaussian distribution. It doesn't matter how you refer to it, but this is basically that. Now, this looks normal to me, so that's okay, but let's look at the other one. Let's go to graph and uh, let's create something like that also for the afternoon shift. So again, we go to histogram, simple. Let's choose the facts afternoon, click on okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so now again I have a histogram, but this is for the afternoon shift. So we see that the afternoon shift, for instance, one time makes two defects. Um, six times they have made four defective items. Compare this with the previous image. Does this look like a bell? Okay, does this look like a normal distribution? Again, the normal distribution was that you had one peak, that peak was in the middle, and as I move away from that peak, the observations become less and less. They follow the shape of a classical bell, okay, like a, like a church bell or something like that. Does this apply to this, just visually determining that? No, it does not. This absolutely does not look normally distributed to me. 
So this was the visual way of determining whether your data is normally distributed, yes or no. But there's also a way to do that with a test. Uh, which test? Go to stat, go to uh, basic statistics, and then normality test. Now choose the, the, the variable that you want to you know, test for normality. Let's start with the data of the morning. Shift and uh, you have to choose one. This is the, the the one that is used very often. There are multiple tests for normality. One is not better than the other, but I'm just using this one. Has been handed down to me. I hand it down to you, but I don't have any problems with the other ones. But this one is just fine. It is used very very often by professionals. So we're gonna choose this. Okay, this is the, the output that we get. What we are mostly interested in is the p-value. And this p-value is higher than 0 0.15 even. Okay, so it is higher than 0 0.15, larger than 0 0.15. P-value of what? Well, the, what we did is a normality test, the kolmogorov smirnov test for normality. Now this test has a no hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. You were already familiarized with no hypothesis and alternative hypothesis, alpha level and p level, rejecting or not rejecting a no hypothesis in an earlier lecture. If you, for whatever reason, skip that lecture, then please refer to that lecture because um, that is relevant for understanding this. But in that lecture, we taught you the following. If you have a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis and an alpha level and a p level, uh, you can make decisions. Which one to reject, which one not. In this case, my null hypothesis is that the data is normally distributed. My alternative hypothesis is that my data is not normally distributed. Well, let's look at my alpha level. Suppose that my alpha level is 5%. This is a very commonly used alpha level, although you can also use 1%. If my um, uh, alpha level is 5% or 0.05, my p-value is above that. What did I teach you about the decision then? The decision is that if your p-value is below your alpha level, reject the null hypothesis. But if it is not below the alpha level, do not reject the null hypothesis. In this case, it is not below my alpha level because it is not below 0 0.05. I do not reject my null hypothesis. I'm going to keep my null hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that the data is normally distributed, so I'm going to keep that assumption, namely that the data is normally distributed. I'm going to assume that the defects that the morning shift produces are normally distributed. Let's do the same for the defects for the afternoon shift, but now at a slightly faster pace. Again, please go to stat, basic statistics, normality test. Defects afternoon goes in here. We're going to keep as our normality, normality test this one, Kolmogorov Smirnov. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our output. And again, um, the, the, the what the, the value that we are mostly interested in is the p-value. We have two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Null hypothesis says data is distributed normally. The alternative hypothesis says that the data is not distributed normally. Let's assume that our alpha level is 0.05 or 5%. Is our p-value below that? Well, our p-value is below 0.01 that is stated here. So it is below our alpha level of 0 0.05. What does that mean? Well, as was already explained to you in an earlier lecture, if your p-value is below your alpha uh, value, uh, value, reject the null hypothesis. If we reject the null hypothesis, then we reject the assumption that the data has a normal distribution. In other words, we're going to go with the alternative. That Namely, that the data does not follow a normal distribution. And the data of the afternoon shift, we also saw visually, does not follow a, um, a normal distribution. You see? You might also be interested in this graph. Personally, I don't really use that graph 
all that much i use the histogram sometimes the histogram uh, coupled with this p value but rarely this graph but just to explain you for the sake of formality what this graph is and how you can interpret it in an absolute perfect normal distribution these uh, dots these, these circles which stand for observations would be nicely arranged throughout uh, on this line well, the more deviation from that arrangement, that perfect arrangement, the more deviation from normality. So if you look here, you see that there's a lot of deviation. Eh? For instance, here uh, you see a lot of deviation, here you see a lot of deviation. You would expect uh, a distribution that is more or less you know, constantly distributed over this line and that is not what you see because you see here clustering and here clustering but in the middle for instance nothing so this is also um, you know information that you may use as an extra layer of information personally I do not do that why because the, the, the histogram already gives me enough information um, especially if I couple it with this the p-value not more is needed one last word of warning is that th these tests can be quite strict okay for instance the kolmogorov smirnov can be quite strict i know from practice i just know from practice years and years and years of experience that most people in the field actual practitioners um just you know look at the histograms and if they see one peak that peak is more or less in the middle and as they move away from the peak observations become less and less and less more or less that is already normal enough for them okay so they don't even look at these p-values because these tests can be quite strict they just do a visual inspection with the histograms i'm not saying that this is the right thing to do i'm just saying what occurs in practice if you want to do it formally then you should do the test but you should also make use of my experience that's it thank you very much have a great day